Hey friends, welcome back to the YouTube channel. If you're new here, my name is Oleg and this is one and only Mr. Bond. We talk about watches on this channel. So Phoebus has released a new diver watch and in today's video, we're gonna review it. Before we review this watch, I just wanna let you know a couple of things. Number one, you're awesome. Number two, this watch was provided by Phoebus for this review for free and we get to keep it. That's not gonna affect the review in any way. I just wanna be transparent. Now, let's get started. Let's begin with the dimensions of this bad boy. It has a diameter of 42 millimeters, so from this point to this point, excluding the crown. It's 49 millimeters from one lock to another, so from this point to this point. However, the way this bracelet is designed, actually the widest points on the watch, so from this point to this point, are about 53 millimeters apart. It has a 22 millimeter lug opening, and the bracelet doesn't taper, so it's 22 millimeters across. And the watch is 14 and a half millimeters thick. Here's what it looks like on my seven and a half inches or roughly under 20 centimeters wrist. For the most part, I like the fit of this watch. 42 millimeters is not too big and this one does wear fairly well. However, this watch is on the thicker side with 14 and a half millimeters. It does hide its thickness fairly well due to the case shape. Nevertheless, you can still feel it and it's not one of your typical desk divers. This is a diver watch that you would wear with t-shirt and jeans, that you would wear to sporting activities or actually take it with you diving. The weight on the watch is 172 grams, sized for my wrist. For a different size perspective, here's the watch next to a Seiko SKX. Seiko SKX being 42 millimeters and this Phoebus being 42 millimeters as well. As you can tell, Phoebus does look larger because of that longer lug to lug distance and also it has a heftier bracelet. Here's a side profile, Seiko being 13 and millimeters and Phoebus being 14 and millimeters. There, the two watches are very similar. Phoebus does look a little bit larger, but not too bad. As I said, it hides its thickness fairly well. 316L stainless steel on the case and the bracelet. I reviewed a few Phoebus watches to this point and each one has impressed me with their finishes. Seems like they're getting better and better with their finishes. This watch is no exception. It has a nice brushed finish on top of the case and on the sides of the case. Nice muted look. However, there is a bit of a shine, a bit of a sun reflection with these chamfered edges. Just gives it enough of a character to stand out. I really like what they did here. The chamfered edges from the lugs also carry throughout the case. They break up the case design really well, they give it much needed relief from that muted look, and they also round out the edges so they're not as sharp. Now the crown is at the 3 o'clock position, it's a screw down crown signed with the Phoebus logo. Gnarling on the crown is great, no complaints there, easy to operate um, and it also has 300 meters of water resistance thanks to that screw down crown and the screw down case back. Let me actually show you the case back. Phoebus has changed the design of their case back for this specific model. I really like what they did here. They changed the shape and also reduced the amount of text on the back. It only says Phoebus and 300 meters with the Phoebus engraved logo in the center. That's it, nice and clean. 120 click unidirectional diver style bezel with the ceramic bezel insert that's loomed. I will demonstrate loom in a few moments but first let's focus on the bezel action. Nice, solid, confident, no backplay whatsoever. Really like this bezel action. However, the bezel doesn't have too much of a grip. If I had wet fingers, if I went swimming, or if I had uh, diving gloves on, it wouldn't be that easy to operate this bezel. Keep that in mind. Otherwise, the bezel action is great. The movement powering this Phoebus Proteus is a Seiko NH35. Do I really need to say more? It has 24 joules, beats at 21,600 vibrations per hour, has 41 hours of power reserve, hackable, hand-windable movement, and has a date functionality. This one is fairly accurate, I'm getting within eight seconds per day. Not too bad, not a bad choice for a watch like this. However, of course, a Miyota 9 series movement would be preferred. The design of this watch is very bold. It's very love it or hate it. Nice sharp angles, very reminiscent actually of a Seiko Samurai or another micro brand watch, Zelos Swordfish. I actually reviewed a couple of Zelos Swordfish watches on this YouTube channel. Uh, look back on those videos if you want to, I will leave links in the description below. I have first hand experience with both Zelos and Phoebus. 
and from my experience they are quite different. Yes, they have similar design language, but the two are not that similar if you look a little bit closer. Zillow Swordfish has sharper angles, a more aggressive case, and Crown Guards, this Phoebus is more rounded off, a little bit less aggressive, and of course doesn't have those Crown Guards, which make the watch wear smaller. It also has a different style of a bracelet, with integrated bracelet lugs, quite like that. However, in a more expensive watch, the bracelet integration would be better. On a more expensive watch, I, I would complain about the bracelet integration. In this price point, it's sort of forgivable, but nevertheless should be mentioned. Other than the bracelet integration, the rest of the bracelet is great. Nice and sharp, chunky links, solid links of course, solid end links. It has screw in place pins, which is surprising for a watch in this price category, and the screws are actually well done. Nice three-fold clasp with the safety uh, here, signed with Phoebus logo. You open it as so, and then you simply unlock it. It's a friction held in place uh, clasp, and it's an engineered clasp. Four micro adjustments, but no diver extension, no easy link. I personally don't use those features, but it would be nice to see in a diver watch. Five different color combinations of this Phoebus watch. One of the five is already sold out. Two out of the five have this meteorite dials. So the pricing goes as follows. 299 US dollars for the non-meteorite version and $420 for the meteorite version. However, I do have a 10% off discount code. I will leave a link in the description below. Use that code if you're interested in buying one of these watches. Do you need a meteorite version? No, no you don't. But is it cool? Yeah, it's kind of cool. I don't know if it's worth $120 extra, but it is cool. Out of the five versions, my favorite is the blue version, the non-meteorite, or this meteorite version with the black bezel. Speaking of the bezel, as I mentioned, it is loomed, and here's a loom shot for you. The loom is great, it's bright, it's evenly applied, and it lasts for a really long time. I have no complaints about this loom, I think Phoebus did a great job with it. The last thing I want to touch on is the design of this watch. I think that's going to be the biggest negative or the biggest hurdle for a lot of watch enthusiasts to get over. Some people will love it and some people will absolutely hate it. And I understand people that love it and I also understand people that hate it. This watch is not really taking itself seriously. From that Phoebus logo at the 12 o'clock position to the funky writing closer to the 6 o'clock position to the funky Milgauss style lightning bolt seconds hand, shark teeth, indices for hour marks, the round date window, all of that might be a little bit too much for some people. I like the design for the most part, it's out there, it's not taking itself too seriously. The only thing that I would change about this dial, and you probably already know this if you've been watching this YouTube channel for some time, is the date window. I think it's unnecessary, I also think it's a little bit too small for this watch. If it were up to me, I'd get rid of it altogether. Also the writing closer to the 6 o'clock position where it says automatic and 300 meters, it's not that easy to read. Um, other than that, the, the dial and the set of hands are pretty great. I don't know how I feel about that lightning bolt Milgauss style seconds hand. It's alright I guess, I'm kind of indifferent. I don't love it, but I don't hate it either. Alright, so that was the review of Phoebus Proteus. I quite like the watch. I think for the price, especially that non-meteorite version, it's pretty good watch. I mean, the finishes are there, the, um, the specs are pretty good. I mean, I wish it had the Miyota 9 series movement. That would have made this watch uh, just that much better. With the Seiko NH35, it's still a pretty solid movement, still a pretty solid choice. Uh, the only negative that I see, the only hurdle that you will really need to get over before you buy one of these watches is the styling of it. Do you like the style or not? I know it's not going to be for everyone. If you do like the styling, I don't think you're going to be disappointed with this watch and it's a pretty good watch for the money. I appreciate you watching this video until the end. Please give it a thumbs up if you enjoyed it. Subscribe to the YouTube channel so you don't miss more videos like this one when they come out and we release new videos every week. Leave a comment in the comment section below. Let me know what you think about this Phoebus. Is it worth the money? What would you change about it? Leave all those thoughts below. I always enjoy reading your comments. By the way, today on my wrist, I'm wearing my Palot Sturmanski chronograph. I did a full unboxing and a review of this watch. Both of those videos can be found on the YouTube channel. I will also leave them linked in the description below. 
Also in the description below there are a couple of other links. The first link is a link to bondnativestraps.com. If you're looking for a great quality native strap and want to support this YouTube channel at the same time, buying one of these native straps is a good way to do so. The second link is a secret link, have a look if you're curious. Thanks for watching, I hope you enjoyed it, I hope you're staying safe, and I'll see you guys next time. Bye! Do you look like a couple of handsome boys? One more than the other. Thanks Petrina, but Bunt is also cute. <laughs> <laughs> Who's a good boy? Who's a good boy? Okay, okay, that's it, that's it. Shh, shh, shh. Okay, one at a time, one at a time, you know the rules.